and then if there's plenty of the spackle, so if you guys need some of it, then just let me know and we can get you plenty more. And water as well. So to make the tinted uh, spackle there, you can mix the spackle with any color of paint whatsoever. But keep in mind that anyone here who has painted before, if you use it, then it's a lot like um, white paint. So what does white paint do when you mix it with something? It dilutes the color and makes it much, much lighter. So you're gonna wanna use, for me, I wanted something very, very pale and I wanted it to be tinted so that you guys would be able to uh, see what you're doing. Um, it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna scoop me some in this cup that they lent to me. I hope I don't destroy it too bad. Okay, so about that much. I may need more. And I don't have paint. I didn't bring paint because I told you that I wouldn't need it. But, so what I would normally do is just some acrylic paint, just squirt it in just a little bit so because I wanted it to be very light. And then, you guys are probably gonna laugh, but what I do is I use my fingers and I dip it in some water and then I just kind of scoop it out and put it straight on the canvas like this and then kind of smush it around like that. And then I do that until it's all covered. And it's kind of gross sounding, but it's necessary. So if you're like OCD or something, you could use maybe a squeaker or something. Yeah, but I just use my hands. I just use my hands. Because whenever you do, I mean, it comes off pretty easily in the water or in the sink. I'm old and OCD. Yeah, which, I mean, you can use the palette knife too. You can use a glove. You can probably use a paintbrush also. Yeah, because when all of these little lines that you see here, I'm about to dip my hand back in this water yeah, and, and smooth it all out. out. Yeah. yeah, and smooth it all out so that again, and it has that kind of dry texture, but again, if you yeah. feel it on the canvas, it's, it's porous. It's dry, but it's porous. And I've noticed that with acrylic painting, the acrylic paint <clears> takes really well to it, and I actually don't have to use as much paint uh, to cover the surface. You tried any of this on metal yet? No, not on metal. I just don't. Wood. No, not wood because I, I always like the texture of wood. I think it would probably work with wood, but I haven't used it with wood yet because um, I always like painting just on wood. I like the texture of wood. But for me, this is like, has anyone worked with ceramics or pottery before? Okay, for me, the squishiness is the fun. I, I, I like the squishiness. So then I'm just gonna kind of coat my hands and see. So, so again, anyone who's ever done pottery or ceramics, they have, what is it, slip? Mm -hmm. Once you do this for a while, see my water is already turning gray. That's from this, I mean, I'm basically making slip on my hands because whenever, you know, in pottery, you use the slip to help make a smooth surface. And you just keep doing that until all the little lines are gone. Although you can keep the lines and that just adds to the texture. That would be a really interesting texture. From here, you can use all kinds of things. You can, um, you can actually from here uh, create a pattern. Like with your knife, you can carve into what's here, um, or you can uh, take saran wrap and like squish it up, and it makes a neat texture. So um, just from this alone, I mean, you won't get the raised relief of the texture, but you'll still get a neat little pattern if you keep this and just do like an imprint of it. But, so that's all I did to get that, to get that with that, that's on your canvas right now. Again, I just did that to save us some drying time um, so that you guys could actually get to work on it. What I'm gonna actually show you how to do the texture on is gonna be the one that already has the base on it, like what you guys have. And again, that porous texture just really helps to, um, and I'm making a mess. I wore jeans today, but I can make a mess with, so it's fine. And I'm gonna put this on our little drying rack real quick so that it doesn't get on the carpet. Which is precious, right, Ty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. Did you just set up the drawing rack for you while you're doing that? I'm, I I'll just, I'll go ahead and set it up. Yeah, because we'll need it anyway. Okay, so with actually making a pattern, what I'm going to do to just show you guys how to make the pattern, one of the most common patterns that I think 
can be best utilized is the nature pattern. So like I'm gonna do just a tree branch because so, I've been asked about trees, how to do the relief with the trees. I'm gonna do a tree branch and then put some flowers on it so that you kind of get both of them. I meant to bring some spoons, but you can get the really kind of the same effect from a, from a palette knife as you can from a spoon. You need spoons. I have five of them. I them off before. They'll ruin them. That's fine. This These are a dollar. You're good. This will ruin them. That's fine. <laughs> the, I've try, I have used metal spoons before, but I like to use the plastic ones just because they're cheaper and I feel bad. So, but, um, so uh, you guys can do the same thing that I'm doing, or you can do something completely different if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. If it's easier for you to learn doing something similar or even the same as what I'm doing, that's fine. But if you want to branch off and do your own thing using the same techniques, that's fine too. So at first, it starts out just like anything else. It's literally just going to be a, a glob. So I think I'm going to do something coming down from the edge here. By the way, today, let's try not to have anything come too far off the canvas because I don't want to have too much cracking. If it dries overnight and you come in and there's a little bit of cracking, don't get discouraged. It's totally fixable. It's not the end of the world. But with something like uh, this one over here that I have that has the really big branches that come off, I would advise waiting to try and do anything like that uh, just because that one had a lot of cracking and stuff. So we want to try to avoid that just for this class and just kind of get a little more practiced at it. And you're just gonna build on it. So what I'm working on now is a, is a branch. And then I have pencils too, if you guys, if it helps you to draw out, you can totally draw on this because this yellow that's currently on your canvas is gonna be covered up. You're, we're gonna paint over it later anyway. So again, it just kind of creates a porous texture and I made it yellow so that you guys can see it. So to give an example, that yellow that I mixed with the spackle was a very bright yellow. I would have never used it for any other reason but to mix it with spackle because it's so bright and garish. But mixed with a bunch of spackle, it made like a really pretty little pale yellow. Who wants to go ahead and like... Yeah, you're yeah. welcome to go ahead. That's why I don't want to get oh. Yeah, they're right there. Um, Jerry, would you care to take me one? He's going to break the little place back. You're using acrylic paint, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I only use acrylics because they're cheap, which brings me to my next point. How I got to doing this was because I'm cheap. Um, I had been using, um, like, the um, actual commercial artistic uh, modeling paste mm -hmm. is what they call it. And I'm going to give us a little curve here. So how you would do a curve is just make the direction go a little bit different. So if you have to do like something drastic like that, just think you can always smooth it out later because this takes a little while to dry. So you can always smooth it out later and work with it. And there's even a point where you can kind of let it dry a little bit and it becomes almost kind of sculpt sculptable, like um, you can kind of chip away at it. So sometimes you'll get, like you can kind of see how my branch is forming. I think I'm probably gonna have mine kind of come off there, come off that way or something like that. But again, you can do something exactly like I'm doing or just you know use your imagination. Um, you want that shadow. If you can kind of see how the shadow is, you kind of have like what I call in my head, I call it a cliff. You kind of have that popping off the canvas. And then later on, whenever we paint it, we're gonna accentuate the texture that's already there with a dark color like um, raw umber or even black. Yeah, yeah. So see, you guys, uh, Scott, he does uh, wood carvings and stuff and uh, wood engravings. And you draw a little bit too, don't you, Scott? You'll draw some trees. So you're not foreign to the forms of trees. That's the fun thing about trees is they're so organic, you know, like anywhere else a form like this may look really funny, but a tree grows whatever way it wants to. And I love trees because they, they follow the light, you know, and that's, that's kind of the way I think we all should live is just trying to follow the light, follow the positivity. So I love doing tree stuff. 
You go, go on the edge as well. Yeah, you can. You can. And even if you like pile it up on the edge like this, you can smooth it back down. And you can take your knife and kind of do like that. And then you get a little bit coming off the edge like that. And it, it adds to the texture. And I mean, if you get really good at it, then you can even wrap the texture all the way around the canvas like I did on that one over there. Is it still over there, the one I'm talking about with the big branches? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can even, you know, add more to it and you can really, you can do so much with it. Like I've done fish, anything you can draw, you can make it 3D and make it pop off the canvas. I've done fish, I want to do some more fish, and I want to do a set of like, I told Coach Song Kai, I want to do a set of like aquatic themed ones with like a, one a starfish, one a seahorse, and um, one maybe a sand dollar, I think that would be sweet. And see how I'm kind of leaving this texture in there? You can make it smooth by again, using some water on your fingers. Um, actually, I would advise using your fingers or even gloved hands to do that since the uh, shape of your hands are smooth. If you use a brush, then you'll get those brush textures. So if you're wanting it to be smooth, then you will probably have to use your fingers or maybe even like a squeegee or a small sponge. They have stuff like that at you know, any craft store, but you're gonna you know, spend a little bit more than if you just buy a pair of gloves and use your fingers. But I think for this one, I'm gonna leave my texture in there so you get kind of that barky texture. But for this one over here, I uh, smoothed it out and then I added a little bit of accent texture on top of it. And I'm gonna do a real funky tree. I'm gonna do one kind of just real kind of kind of wacky. And if you get little spots like I don't know if you guys can see here where I, it's kind of overlapped from the design, that's fine because I can paint over it a little later with black, or I can clean off my knife and just scrape it away. You ever use sandpaper with this to send something down the lip you, you could do that too, but I, I haven't used that, so um, it, it would be a good experiment to try something like that. But I um, I haven't tried it yet. Um, I'm always wary of um, how fragile the finished piece of when it's dry is going to be. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. So if you're going to try that, I would use something very very fine i wouldn't use something you know that's too uh bumpy that's the words come to mind but that's not the word coarse yes coarse yeah um i wouldn't use anything too coarse to smooth it out with i don't know i guess i'm just a fan of using my fingers so here where i'm making this other branch that comes off from the same branch you want to kind of pile it on a little bit higher because that'll make it where it looks like you have dimension within the piece. So instead of everything being the same flat layer, you'll have a little bit that comes up higher than the rest of it. And that gives the idea of a dimension within dimension. So it's okay to make a little bit, you know, pieces of it higher than the rest and stuff. So I'm going to make this branch that comes up here look like it's coming off farther from the piece than the others. And then if you're going to do that, you want to make sure it's consistent. So this whole piece right here is going to come off a little farther than the rest. And then whenever I go back and paint it after it's dry with some, you know, uh, raw umber, a dark color but not black, because I think that black is overused as far as painting goes. Because, I mean, you want a dark painting sometimes and you want contrast, but black is a very, very powerful color to use in painting. And sometimes it's overused. And um, the thing about it is it, anything that is paired with it, it muddies it and it makes it darker. So like, it takes a lot of white to make a color lighter, but it only takes a little bit of black to make a color darker. again I'm just almost kind of a dragging motion whenever you first apply it to the piece use the kind of palette knife to drag it and you can use different shapes so I'm going to take this branch all the way
scraping or hearing is me just kind of driving off and finishing some of these edges. And again, I want this tree, I want it to kind of be a rougher tree. I want it to have a story. But if you want yours to be smooth, that's okay too. Again, you'll just kind of dip your hands in the water and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Dip your hands in the water and just kind of smooth it out. Let's see, you can kind of see where it's smoother in that one area where I added the water. Almost kind of like a, um, a massaging motion if you wanted to make yours smooth. And I think, I think this is very therapeutic. I get a lot of kind of relax, relaxation and therapy from doing this. So now going back and looking at this, I see this one area right here in my branch, it's a little thinner than I'd like it to be. If it were a tree in real life, that would break later. So I'm gonna patch it up, make it a bit thinner there, or make it a bit thicker. And again, just drag it on through so you get consistency. You don't want it to look too, too choppy or anything. So you can see that the texture I have, it's consistent. It goes all the way through and you can see the streaks in it like actual bark. Now, but there are some trees that have a choppier texture. So that's the fun of doing this. That's the fun of doing really anything nature inspired is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little choppier, a little funnier looking. Like my little wonky branch down here, I love it. silent you're all concentrating it's great <laughs> yeah I know I know yeah it makes us really quiet we don't you hear what's going on in our heads oh yeah yeah well you guys are, are welcome to ask questions too I mean it so next time I put up Shiva and then we'll <laughs> well, and there's there's this guy I saw on YouTube, and he sculpts straight onto the wall with this stuff. That's it's awesome. really high relief, like off of the wall. It's wild. So does anyone have any questions so far about doing a tree shape? So you can see in mine, even, you know, I have all these little areas. I can either scratch that off when it dries a little bit more with my actual palette knife or right now while it's wet I could scrub it a little bit with my fingers with wet fingers or I could just leave it there and it just adds to the texture so it, I mean there's really no harm in doing it you know how are we getting I see you've got a really nice shadow in there it's just coming just off from building farther building. yeah it's okay. just coming off farther from the canvas and some of it's wet. <laughs> so it might look darker around like this area because it's wet. Yeah, just pile it on there. And then I'll show you here in a minute how I do the flowers. The flowers are super easy and fun. Although I'll, I'm gonna show you guys how to do like simple petal flowers that um, probably don't exist in real life. I mean, <laughs> they're just flowers, I, I, I guess, from my head that makes sense. Whenever the mind sees it, they register as flowers, but they're not orchids or anything specific. They're just flowers. <laughs> but I can also do roses that are really pretty. Like here is a good example of one that has roses, and those are a little bit more difficult. So if you want to incorporate a rose, let me know, and I can I can show you. But it's, it's a little more advanced with this technique than just the you know, simple petal roses, which is what I was going to add here to my uh, branches. And then if you want to do foliage, with foliage, I just kind of do bunches, which I haven't done like foliage, like for a tree, like leaves in a long time, because the way that I do them with the texture is very like abstract. So it's literally just a big clump of texture and then I paint it really pretty colors. 
Uh, but if you wanted to do that, I can show you how I do that. Again, it's just a little more advanced than adding on flowers. Which, if you guys liked doing this, then I mean, we could have um, an advanced option for doing it where I teach you guys more techniques with doing this. Again, we could have an entire class just dedicated to using objects like um, spoons or uh, saran wrap, like I mentioned earlier, or bubble wrap you can make textures from. There are all kinds of things. We could do an entire class with just carving straight from the dried background. There, there are so many options with doing this, and I kind of got inspired with doing this because of, um, I, I really liked the, the look of what I had seen from like textured art and stuff like that. And I had tried using the commercial, you know, actual crafting and painting uh, modeling paste, and it was just so expensive. It was like $40 for a jar, you know, this big and I get I get a tub of spackle for seven bucks <laughs> and it goes a lot farther and I notice that the consistency is really similar so and it seems to dry pretty well and dry pretty similarly so I'm trying to decide I think I'm gonna do another branch coming off this way which is pretty ambitious again you don't have to do it the same way that I do it, but if it helps you learn, that's absolutely fine. And see, now my, my spackle's gotten ahead of me, and I've kind of drug off to, into, into here, so I'm just going to kind of scrape it away, scrape away what I don't want. And that's really how you get, like, the really thin kind of branches and tendrils and details and, and stuff. So keep that in mind. I mean, it always just scrape it away or hide it with paint later now if you want it to so here on this one it's going to be a much tinier branch so I'm using the side of my knife to kind of flatten out the texture to make it from this end to the thick end so it's almost kind of like a flicking or swishing motion that creates the end of it being thinner than the base what? What's wrong? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you were doing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did Swish and flip. That's great. I love the hair. <laughs> and my background isn't going to be yellow, so I can I can mess it up as much as I want. And a lot of times I work from a base that's just the spackle, that's just the white. Really the only reason that I tinted it this go around was to help you guys. To help you guys kind of see what you were doing. Oh, sure, why not? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it's a good thing for you to learn. It's a good step for you to learn, honestly. Because on, which one was it? On this one up here, all of these flowers on this one are actually uh, the spackle mixed with the acrylic paint. And I used more paint to spackle with those flowers, with the petals of those flowers. So whenever I did that, whenever they dried, they almost had more of an elasticity because of the acrylic paint. But they, they dried harder, like the spackle. And they dried with more texture. So that was an interesting thing to have learned from. All of these paintings are an experiment. So, so there's, there's a story behind each one and a different thing that I, I kind of mastered or learned to do in each one. So I have some more. Exactly, which that's the fun of it, you know? That's the fun of doing any kind of craft or artwork, you know? It'll always come out different, and that's really the benefit to, you know, purchasing or gifting things that are handmade and original, too, because you you can see the, the, the learning in it. You're, you know, you're investing in, in someone's experience, 
And I just, I think that's a really amazing way to kind of look at things like that. Can I grab some more? Yeah, more spackle. Here, I'll scoop it over there. Oh wait, there's some here. You can just scoop it straight out of there if you like. Mm -hmm. And you guys let me know if you need more water too, okay? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. It will. So again, you can mix just a little bit of water in there, or, which it may be different for me because I use so much water and I get my hands wet so much doing it, you know, to help with just my process. And again, that's the way I do it, but that's not necessarily the way that you have to do it. And once it gets to that kind of, you know, sticky phase of drying, that's when it's really good to uh, chip off those pieces that you don't want or to sculpt around some pieces that you want to get rid of or want to refine. Yeah. You get that nice shadow and dimension. And again, later whenever we paint it tomorrow, you can add a texture in with the paint. Like if, if you see that there's some inconsistencies, that there are maybe some areas that you wish came off farther from the canvas whenever you made it, you can kind of give that dimension with paint to to an extent, you know? Okay, and I think this is gonna be my last branch coming down. And then I'll go ahead and add start adding the flowers. And the scraping technique is really kind of a good uh, thing to implement too with the ends of your branches where you want it to be very refined and kind of uh, pointy. Because it's kind of hard to get that just from uh, using the palette. glad to hear you all concentrating so hard and hearing a lot of scraping and such. Does everyone have any questions so far? Okay. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. I'm basically just carving. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. That looks a lot like the uh, tree that you did for Mike. Yeah. spooky trees. I think they look spooky. But they're spooky's good. Spooky's good. Okay, so there's my tree. My wacky little tree branch. So if you guys are still sculpting, I see I still see some sculpting and with the with the trees and stuff. It's all looking pretty cool so far. Where did you go to school? William Blunt? 
perfect yeah. answer. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just graduated from William Watt. I, did, I haven't gone to school yet, so, mm -hmm. but like college or anything. Did you learn, learn a lot from going to school for art there, or is it? More from just experience. I mean, I loved art class so much and like did a lot of things with art class and learned a lot from the opportunity of having the supplies and um, having the time to experiment and get to know materials and stuff. So yeah, I would definitely say that it was very good for me to have had that opportunity with art class in school too. So that's why I think that these programs that we're wanting to try and do will be really, really beneficial to a lot of people. It gets very hypnotizing, like trying to smooth everything out and refine and, de and decide when it's done and when you want to add more. And I always like to add a little bit of wabi-sabi. I always like things to be a little bit off kilter. So like I have this big kind of blank space here and I learned a lot about kind of forms and how to, I guess, design things where they look really nice and they're pleasing to the eye, I guess from graphic design and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So like I have my branch branching off from, you know, one of the corners, but not directly in the corner mm -hmm. so that your eye has movement and I direct. And the S huh? The J and the S curve. Yeah, yeah. I, I like those wacky curves and stuff because they, they create direction and movement. So, you know, in my pieces, I try to not only incorporate texture, but also use the texture as an instrument to create that movement and that, that direction to where you, you like to look at it. It's not mm -hmm. something that's just pretty. It's something that you can look at and your eye moves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just stay still. Symmetry too. That's something that you'll notice kind of a lot. Is I don't like mirrored images very, very much, you know, or I don't like something that's just kind of in the center. If if one of my characters is in the center, then they have something else that is asymmetrical with them. Like in this one, she's got the flowers. She's almost center, but she's got the flowers in one corner, and then from the center, you have the direction of the zentangle that takes your eye to the opposite direction. So there's something directing you to almost every part of the canvas mm -hmm. in a different way. So that's something that's really fun to do with even portraits and stuff, is just add that little bit of texture. But I think this is just one of the most relaxing techniques I've learned to do. Like I'm, I'm not used. To, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to sitting in a chair. I, I, I usually sit on the couch or like in the floor. <laughs> so I'm like tempted to sit in the floor right now, but that's unprofessional. <laughs> Of curve the edges of your branches 
with, you know, again, some water or even your palette, just kind of curve them a little bit with either sculpting or you can kind of take the palette and just create like a, like a crease underneath the, um, the branch to give you a little bit more dimension even and make it seem like it's literally growing from the canvas. on my flowers you guys are welcome to just you know continue with what you're doing refining your uh, branches and such I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of show you the different kind of flowers that you can do though I'm gonna use a spoon for one kind and then for another kind I'm gonna use one of the thicker palette knives so if you have one of the uh, thick ones you might want to get uh, the spade one or the long thin one the long thin one is what I have but the spade one actually works really, really well. It makes some really kind of unique looking flowers too. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scoop a little bit. And again, it's not going to be perfect. And pull it on about halfway to the spoon's curve. So you see that I have it about halfway full there. And this is going to be a pretty big flower. So if you're doing bigger flowers, then I would suggest using a spoon or something like that, and you're gonna get nice rounded petals. Um, and then for the center of it, then I use, I kind of bundle up a little bit on uh, one of the palette knives and just kind of dip it in the center. So I'll go ahead and put one of my flowers, I'm gonna use the spoon for the ones that will overlap the thicker parts uh, so that you know it'll kind of make up for itself. And then the ones that are gonna be dotted throughout are gonna be with the uh, thinner palette knife. So I'm just gonna kind of scrape it there and see, that's one of my pebbles. Now, if you wanted to leave it red, like <clears throat> rough around the edges like that, that's, that's fine. I, I like to do that a lot. Or if you want it to be a little rounder, then again, use your water. And again, I, I use the fingers, dip the finger, and then just kind of round it off. And you can make it a little rounder. And again, it's very fun to work with. So, I mean, you can, or if you want it to be wider, then you can kind of press on it and move it around and make it wider. And refine it and make it smooth. All right, and I'm gonna pile me up some more. And now I actually think that the bigger ones are a little bit harder than using the palette knife because it's a little harder to control the amount that's going on the spoon whenever you've done it several times in a row. But you just kind of have to stay on it. And again, if you make a mistake, if you make a flower that just looks like total dew, then you can just scrape it right off and start over if you want to. No harm done. So I'm gonna make me another petal right here and you want your petals to overlap. So you see how kind of I dragged it all the way through? That's mm -hmm. gonna create a little bit more dimension. And if you pile it up a little bit more in the middle as you make the flowers, you'll be able to make the center of your flower better. What's the center of the flower called? Uh, a little bit mm -hmm. with the pollen and such. Iris? No, I that's, the, that's the center of your eye. That's and the type of flower. I believe pistol. I think that's where the, because uh, that's the male part. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I, told, I told you all to watch your language. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Middle part. Um, joke. Flower. So that way I can stop sounding like a ninny saying so many words. It's a stamen. Yes, that's yes. what it is. Stamen. You were right so, with the pistol. It's the, uh, that's the ovule producing, though. Okay. That's not the male, that's the female. <laughs> <laughs> Flower 
See, since I'm doing it in the corner, it makes it kind of difficult for me to get the rounded edges. So I'm going to kind of dissolve that part right there and move it around. It's getting heavy. It doesn't want to stick. Huh? It's getting heavy. It doesn't want to stick. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it will. That's why I usually work on mine uh, flat or um, with a different type of. Actually, I only work on these flat, you guys. <laughs> I was about to lie to you. But, like, I. I haven't even used my easel except to like hang stuff on, so <laughs> I, I really only, I was about to say that sometimes I'll use an easel, which I will like at my art shows and stuff, but even then it always ends up in my lap. I think it's probably just easier to work on that way. So I'm going to take some more and build up. with just a little bit of a mess there, which is fine. So I'm going to take some of my water and use my fingers. I was showing my sister, Sydney, how to do this too. And just define those petals back. It's literally just like clay. myself a big old flower up there and for the center I'm going to use a little bit from again the thinner palette knife just kind of scoop it on there there we go and there's my little flower or my first one smooth out a little bit more on the edges. Now it'll make it a little it'll make your petals a little bit wider. And keep in mind if it seems like you have to look at, at this stage you have to look at things a little bit more abstractly and think about what it's going to look like whenever you paint it. Whenever you paint it you can add some more contours in there to separate the petals. You're doing fine. I have some that look like that and I mean I sold some that look like that. Okay. That looks like a flower to me. Okay. You know what? This is so me, though. I just sit on the floor, yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares. And it might be easier for you guys to see, too, from that angle. That's what I was thinking. And obviously, I don't, I don't care to get messy. I'm a very, like, messy painter paint and stuff like that to me like that's 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 not dirty like it's just it's just paint because I have clothes stained with paint you know all the time and again to me that's that's not dirty or, or anything so yeah mess equals fun but I understand that some people just really get bothered by stuff like that totally understandable there are ways around that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind my clothes being dirty, it's just my hands. I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, again, you can wear gloves to do this. 
Yes, you can. Um... Maybe one of our nice No, he didn't. He's kidding. Um, He's saying, so kidding. Why would you He's got that? mud all over those already. <laughs> I see that now. <laughs> I'm sorry if I hit you with this. You're fine. You say that until we're off camera. <laughs> and see, for this one, I wound up with a bunch of uh, of the mud kind of bunched up in the center anyway. So I'm just going to use that as my middle. I'm just going to kind of bunch it up a little bit more and keep it rough looking. And that excess I'm going to use for my, what was the word again? Stan, Stan, Stamen. 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 Okay. Yeah. Stamen. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure whenever you're placing your flowers, you don't want to, again, I'm going to use two different kinds on this one. I'm going to use some thin little tendril ones. Scott, you want to do some foliage on yours, or do you just want to yeah, do I'm just sitting here looking at I'm doing, Yeah, it. yeah. I, I just remember that you're doing a different type of tree. You're not doing just a branch or anything like that. Yeah, I can see I'm the doing, silhouette of yours from the back. Really, it looks really cool. Thanks. I'm doing leaves right now. Yeah, sure. I mean, you guys run with it. If you see a different way you can implement it, and you know, sometimes with foliage, I'll just put a big blob on there and then carve out little divots with a knife, you know? Mm -hmm. And and then th that's one way to do it. Or you can do each individual um, leaf or petal, like um, this one up here with the birds and the petals. Each one of those tiny things, oh my gosh, it was so terrible to paint. Tedious. Now that I know di different ways of doing it, I would have done it differently. But um, each one of those is, you know, individually sculpted. But now what I would have done for one of those is um, mixed in a tint with it and then put a mm -hmm. highlight on over it. That's the reason that I did that other one that way with the flowers was because I didn't want to have to paint in between all the little individual flowers. That would have been bugging me. But anyway, what I was getting to was you don't want to, like, so these flowers are relatively big, so you don't want to clump them together. Uh, you want to create a space. So I think I may do three or four of those big flowers and then uh, put little tiny ones with the palette knife in the empty space. Again, I do things more abstractly, so if you guys are going for, you know, more realism with the anatomy of a tree and such, that's fine too. Uh, you can, again, fine tune it whenever we paint it. Um, and then uh, with the little ones, again, have them kind of sparsed out. And the way I do it is whenever I have little ones kind of sparsed out in between in the open space, I use the little flowers to kind of make up for any design flaws. So like if I wanted the flow of the painting to have a different direction, I'll use the flowers to change that direction because sometimes it can be harder to um, change the direction of like a tree branch where it all has to flow together mm -hmm. than just adding in one tiny little element that helps to drive your eye where you want the eye to go whenever they look at your piece. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Here, if you do you want to try setting it on your lap or setting it flat, and you can use the towel. Um, I'll, I'll put just it, lay it down. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll leave this here in case you want to use it. Sorry, I didn't mean to just throw that at you. <laughs> 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 so, <dare> you. so rude. <laughs> so rude of me. I apologize. You're just a perfectionist. A lot of times it will. I kind of paint fast, you guys. Don't I, Scott? I kind of yeah. paint. That's what I, I did. I like, practiced that pouring technique. I'm uh -huh. like, man, I'm done in like an hour. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it usually more, takes me so, so long. To there's more time in preparing your the paint. Prep. Yeah. And preparing, deciding what you want to do than there is in actually doing it. I'm used to taking. See here, again, the spackle kind of got away from me a little bit, so I'm just going to use this cheap old palette knife to kind of carve away what I don't want. 
can see, you can tell kind of up here in the corner, I have a little bit of uh, the background color that shows up. That's fine, we're gonna paint it. So I don't have to mess around with that if I don't want to. Now, whenever you make like a blobby detail, like the stamen, right? Yes. Gosh, I, it's just like, it feels weird coming out of my mouth. It does, it feels like it should be some kind of other word. Yeah, anyway. But whenever you do something like that, you I like to sometimes kind of make the spackle loose on the palette so that I can just kind of blob it on there since this stuff gets sticky. And I think that that helps to kind of do details like that. Did you have an epiphany? Oh, yeah. those are cute. That's so neat. Yeah, he's doing little pine trees. See, so there are so many different ways that you can experiment with this. But about the wood, I would imagine that it would work pretty well with wood since wood is already porous. Yeah. So. That's what I was wondering about mail. I just want to not to do is uh, cheat and start doing soft paint. Because wood, well, metal though is. I don't know how yeah, yeah, you may have to put, maybe even if you just put something down as a medium or a base where you want your design. You know, I put something on the entire canvas for you guys because I didn't know what we were going to turn out with, you know. So I just prepared for you guys to cover the whole canvas if you wanted to. But, you know, you can just fine tune it because I personally, I'm not a fan of the raw texture of just the canvas itself. I don't know why. I, I just don't like the canvas texture, I guess. So almost all of mine, I coat in spackle anyway nowadays. I just cover it in the spackle and then paint over the top of it, even the ones that are flat. I like the uh, flat texture that I get from it. It gives the appearance that I have used more paint than I actually have. <laughs> so again, I, I cheat. I actually stumbled upon this kind of technique back few years back trying to paint the ceiling of my house. Yeah. And I went to Lowe's and got some cheap paint and uh, had stuff dripping off the dripping ceiling. Yeah. So I was trying to paint it, you know. Mm -hmm. and so I took a uh, cheap rock mode and mixed in here so it would actually stick to the top of it. Uh, well, hey, that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty smart. smart. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> would work pretty well with wood. I, I actually really love to paint on wood. I do too. I love the texture of it. I'm so glad that that little uh, one with the star sole, that was probably my favorite one so far that I've done on wood. I have a ton of wood palettes at home, but I just have not had time to paint them yet. Okay, I'm out of mode. Okay. Mode? Yeah, we, there's plenty. Here for you guys to pass around if you think you'll have room. Ooh, my belly growled. Oh. I have a problem. No, it's okay. It's okay. All right, try to figure out how to get this hair spinning now. Just gotta kind of pile it up there on the back of it, because if you use the, if you use it like you you, you eat with, you know the actual concave part of the spoon it won't scrape right although you could use it to texture like if you wanted to create some textures you could kind of you know punch it in there that would actually be really smart if you're doing like a fish and you wanted to do scales yeah. or even the back of the spoon here mm -hmm. you could kind of poke in there I think that's all of the big flowers that I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start on my little ones. Now the little ones I think are a lot easier. Yeah, Scooby some more out there. <laughs> and this will actually be good because I always think I'm going to use all this. <laughs> so, so sharing is good. <laughs> 
I've had to actually adjust to getting the smaller uh, things because I don't use it all at once. To dry on me. Yeah, it dries out. So I, I end up wasting it, but it's still much better than spending $40. Oh, no joke. Let's put water on top of it. Oh, yeah. I'm okay, I'm gonna right by it. Well, and this is the first big tub that I've gotten since doing this. Okay. And I, again, I do things more abstractly. So with mine, I'm going to do my little flowers just kind of in the open space here whenever we paint them. I'm not even going to attach them to the tree because it almost kind of gives a fantastical feel to it as well as give the impression that the flowers are falling or floating around it you know I, I I'm not so much for like cluttered details as doing you know tiny little branches and stuff like that I don't always think all of that is necessary especially with textured artwork so just keep in mind that with the details details are, are good but again it's like with, with how people add in black whenever you add in details in something you don't always have to use black because black is so bold and the contrast of black with almost any other color is, is very, very, um, again, it's very bold, so it can give the impression of it being cluttered. So you can use other colors to do contrast. Or you could use black to tint a color like red or orange or make a brown or even green, you know. You can make a shade of any color without having to use black. Or a tint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now with these, you're literally just going to be using the shape of the palette knife to make the petals. So I'm going to do tiny little petals, and again, the spade-shaped uh, knife works really well too. It makes some really interesting shapes. And you're just going to want to take it around. Almost like little fingers. Huh. Smooth that out just a little bit. And again, I'm going to kind of use these tiny flowers as, as an instrument to guide my vision where they want to go. You know, they're going to be an accent, but they have a much bigger part to play in guiding the the vision guiding the movement of the you know whoever is looking at it and you can also use flowers and foliage or even again like a bird to hide mistakes i've done that several times yeah. like if i have like a huge crack in something or a piece chipped off um i'll sculpt a, a big uh bird or something like that over the top of it to, to hide it and it, it's kind of you know it's kind of cool to see what comes of you know what are technically mistakes and that's where you really get creative sometimes and if you want to pile up a little bit more on this skinny one then you can and it'll make a wider petal and these things are really cheap, you guys. You can get like a whole kit of several for under five dollars. Some of that, please. This can only make it down. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> have you have you lifted this one? It's ridiculous. That's why it's so expensive is because it's so heavy. Like it's it's a financial commitment to carry that. Like, and that's why the one that I have that's enormous, that's why that's so expensive too is because, I mean, you're going to have to pay me to bring that out of my house. It, the canvas would hardly fit as it was in the, one on the, the car. Yeah, the one in our hallway right now. I mean, you know, you are just worth it also. Not yeah. that it's like. I'm just worth it. I'm just worth it. <laughs> 
not that it's heavy, but <laughs> it's... Yeah, it goes. I think it is. Yeah. And again, you'll have some flowers that are a little funkier than others, and that's okay. They got personality. That's how you can tell it's you know handmade too. You don't want it to look like it's made in a factory. Except Bob Ross used to say, "There are no mistakes. Just happy little flowers." Yeah. Just happy little flowers. Happy little trees. That's how I learned everything. Sadie, the next Bob Ross. There's no accidents. There's just no accidents. happy little flowers. Yeah. <laughs> happy <laughs> clouds. If you made a mistake. Just slap some spaghetti on there. <laughs> Cover it with a bird. <laughs> I mean, seriously though, that's where your creativity comes in. What can I turn this into? <laughs> well, hey, that's that's part of it too. That's part of it is figuring out when is enough. When's it, enough. When's it done? When you quit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I wish I quit. <laughs> well, remember like if there's that. if there's any the part, yes, the happy little birds. Happy little birds. <laughs> oh, I didn't teach you guys birds. <laughs> hey, Penny, do you need the towel? Would you like the towel for a second? I've got a shirt. Okay, just making sure. Anybody else need the towel? That's the community towel that's at Emily's feet. <laughs> that's why I wore the shoulder shirt. Okay, just making sure. Because I, always, you know what? The more you get on you, hey, that's the part of the piece. I think Penny was more prepared than any of us for this day. Yes. <laughs> I brought these an, are my oldest jeans. I brought an apron, thinking, okay, I'll just put an apron. I'm like, no, I'd rather just get into it. Yeah, just get into okay. it for Absolutely. sure. Like, there is a way to do this without making a mess. Promise. What but is that? I'm just a bad example. I'm just a bad example. <laughs> I can show you how I do it. And then what I like to do too is sometimes I'll add just like these little dots in here that I call petals. <laughs> and they register, I mean the mind registers them yeah. as petals whenever whenever you paint it because we're gonna paint it the same color. But that's the fun thing about abstract is, you know, the, the mind kind of fills in the pieces. You just have to give it a hint of what it is. But I think that's fun. And keep in mind, too, that, I mean, if there's something you don't like, you can just scrape it right off. Oh, yeah, I've done that, but I've done dirty. Oh, me too, <laughs> me too. That's part of it, and you know what, I think that's really interesting to see kind of how the mind works in this process of painting and sculpting, you know, it's, it, again, that's why it's therapeutic, it's almost, you know, it's almost meditating, because you're just kind of letting your mind work through its ideas. Oh, oh my no. gosh, that stinks. I think we're okay. Now I'll use the towel. <laughs> it's okay, man. I got it. That's all right, that kid washes. That's pretty good enough on their way. I should have wore a longer shirt. <laughs> <laughs> can't get it all the way down there, can you? Sorry, man. Oh, you're fine. Hey, Messy's good. Messy's good. New name of the class. Messy is good. Class. Messy good. <laughs> Messy good. I am excited though to see all the the people that have passed by and just stared and watched. Yeah. Like that makes me extremely happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's really really fun. Getting this. Well, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People like some people I've talked to are like they don't know if they have any. Right. You know, it's like, you yeah. don't know until you try. Absolutely. And I just went away from it for 20 years. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. And came and back, came to, back it. to it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a whole part of me, you know, being a mom of a nurse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that I forgot. I had. Forgot was even part I of it. I tapped yeah. into it. Yeah, see, with this, we can, can give people the opportunity yeah, yeah. to find that. 
everybody has some kind of artistic ability. It's just it's trying to figure out where your artistic ability yeah. lays. Yeah. It might be digital art. It could be 3D art. It could be, you know, acrylics only or drawing. Oh, there's Jesse. Let me let it run. <laughs> Opportunities like dark. I thought it was someone who's extremely interested. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like getting into it. You know? Hey, see, what's up? I'm not going to. Hi, I'm not taking. Hello. No, you're good. Just take a seat. Okay. That, that canvas, so. Really? It doesn't count. <laughs> um, it's, uh, no, I didn't pay, so I can't, but um, oh, okay. I just wanted to stop by and see and watch. Yeah, just so you know, you're on camera. Anybody oh, cool. that's in here? Hello. We just talked about being, there's no mistakes, there's only happy little flowers. Yes. <laughs> yes, happy little flowers. Some of us are perfectionists, and some of us just don't care. Yeah. What is, what is the stuff that you're using? Spackle. Spackle. Is that cheap? Wow, I never would have thought of that. Yeah, well, I had um, originally used um, the modeling commercial, paste. yeah, modeling paste, and it was really expensive. So I was like, what else can I use? So I experimented, and I, I found this. Which, come to find out, there are several other artists. I can't take full credit. There are several other artists who um, use spackle as a sculpting compound. Um, which, be obviously, the more the better, you know. It was just something that I personally kind of found out about myself through experimentation. What are you making for me? A mess. I can't make some flowers. I have tried. I can't make them. Well, everybody's got so, their own flowers. So it's yeah, see, that's the fun thing flowers. about this. So I can yeah. start making my own. No, yeah, yeah. See, and yeah, again, I've made some before that literally and like look like blobs, you know. And I just paint it. And keep in mind that you can again tap your finger in it and use your finger as as a mold to divot out little uh, details. So I mean. You guys are all doing awesome. I can't wait to see how they all turn out. Seriously, I'm so excited. Huh? I'm excited for you all to be here. Because we didn't have anything like this like a decade ago when I was in high school. <laughs> um, I don't think we're on top about decades ago. <laughs> I think we. I I know I got you beat on that one. So. Oh. You talked about it's taught. Um, uh, Jesse, all this will be on Facebook talent. later, so you My can go back and review everything. Talent. So she it'll be on the uh, Mad Art thing. magazine next month too. Um, so I could draw a stick figure. Yeah. And uh, then I think she sent an email out to all of us. One day, you know what? I'm gonna draw, and. I can draw it now. So, you know, you're never too, you're never too old. Yeah. Just gotta, I mean, it's honestly just practicing and, and being open to learn. Yes. I think I can't say enough, you know, there, I mean, I, I'm good at certain things, but there, there's definitely a lot that you can still learn. And you have to be open to learning because you'll never learn all there is to know. So be open to other people's experiences. And would it be boring if you did? Yes. Life would be so dull if you knew everything. Now, Sadie, you're very young to, to, to come up with that because I've got a 20 year old who thinks she knows everything. How old do you think I am? You're what? You're you're what? Nineteen? Twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Okay. But you know what? You're still a baby. <laughs> I I might as well be. I do that all the time. You're old enough to be a nurse. I'm like, uh, uh, thanks. It's Excuse good, like, me. The harder you get, the harder it is to judge age. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a kid. And you hope every yeah, because because yeah. you feel like you are right. Yeah. Sometimes people mm -hmm. look at you and they think you're young and they think you're like inexperienced and you're like, no, I'm 38 years old. Like, I'm a lot 
older than that happened to me yesterday. <laughs> I went to do a maintenance call and she's like, You're the head maintenance guy? <laughs> yeah. You do look really young. Yeah, I yeah. am. <laughs> We've been married for ten years. Oh yeah. how long? Ten. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought at first she said twenty. Oh, no, I ain't no way. No, no, no we didn't get married at ten. We are not. Huh? But I finally got my tree to take texture. That's what I was doing when I thought it on her leg. Did my, my jeans get a good texture? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, there's an idea though. There's an idea, honestly. If you need, if you need more, I've got another leg over here. <laughs> I'm on your other leg. There are so many ways. sharing here. There are sharing so many is caring. Ways. Sharing is right. caring. I'm like so zen doing this though. It just relaxes me. And again, I, I I'm not like really overly worried about making a mess and stuff. So for me, the 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 mess it's part of the therapy for me. Well, I've got that enormous saw blade that you saw. Yeah. I'm about to tackle it because it's winter time and I can't carve it up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd be really excited to see what you come up with for that. Are you just wanting to finish what you currently have, or? Yeah, I'm just going to restart that. Do something else? I mean, I'm still going to do a grist mill, but it's going to be a little You guys are all doing amazing. I'm loving to see all the ideas that you guys are coming up with and the different ways you're applying it because it really is just a concept that you can just really just run with you know you don't have to Everybody do it. Has their unique style. yeah you don't have to do it the exact same way that I do it that's part of the fun is again seeing the way other people take to it and the other ideas that people have it's fun it's fun because too because you may not learn this. You may not learn the same way I learn, and then you know the next person may not learn diff. May learn differently. Yeah, it'll be different every time. That's right. It's fun. And I always say that art should be an experience. That's why I always try to encourage you know people on my Facebook page and stuff to come out and you know if there's art hanging somewhere, go look at it. Go you know be. Have a memory of you going out and seeing and viewing it and looking at it. Because that's how you grow a connection with it, I feel. Because now in the, you know, the digital age, we, we see pictures all the time. But to actually see that piece of art, you know, hanging somewhere. And again, this, that, being able to touch it and, and feel it come off the canvas, it it's really makes it an experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love like live music. I like listening to it in the in the radio, on the radio in the car or something like that. I'm picky about my music. But you could be playing anything live and I'll stand there and, and listen to mm-hmm. it, you know. I think because it's more mesmerizing. Yeah, I mean it's like it's cool to watch people do that stuff. And now whenever you hear that song or something that you you'll remember it being played somewhere. Would you like me to invite you to watch this live? Sure. <laughs> no, we've been letting there's been a ton of people back through there. I don't want anybody coming in here and being extra loud and trying to grab stuff. So um, a lot of them have just been going to the bathroom and then watching. And all of our information is out there, so they can call or. Maybe we could do like a text, like like a textured mermaid. Yeah, that's what I was saying because I was showing them how to use the spoons, and I was saying that with this part of the spoon, you know, the uh, concave part, you could like add texture of like the scales. Mm-hmm. You know, you could divot in the scales, or even with the back of the spoon. Because I've done fish before, and that would be so fun. 
It's actually what I was thinking about doing, but I'm terrible with places, so I was like, I'm just going to scratch that idea. What about a fish place? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you're kind of that way. How are you at fish? I'm not so good at fish either. <laughs> or birds. Oh, or come on. Like. Now, see, that's another class I could take. I know, how to, I know how to draw, like, basic <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You know? you know, Google Images is, like, mm -hmm. so good. It's such a great... <laughs> Yes. Artist yes. reference. Like any <laughs> picture that you want to see a reference of something, just put it, type it in, and you get like thousands of images. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like it's making art. Isn't that so fabulous? My yeah. search history probably looks really suspicious because of that. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I have to look for very specific poses. So, like, yeah. And, and a lot of times, like, I want to know the anatomy. So, because that helps me be able to see the shapes that are like in the shoulder and the collarbone and stuff like that. I want to know how that is because most of my figures don't have clothes on because I think it inhibits it, but <laughs> I don't think it does anything for it because I, I like the human form as it is. So my, my Google history probably looks really suspicious. <laughs> I remember one time I was doing like a picture of yoga yeah. and I looked I looked up I googled like old wrinkled yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know something to do with like an old person's hands or like naked body or something. And I looked up like old naked man or <laughs> something oh, and I was like That's not something you really want to see in <laughs> <laughs> to see my Google image my yeah, exactly like it's morbid. I've seen a video, so it's what if Google search was actually a person. What? Oh, so gosh. This guy yeah. a desk just, oh gosh! Yeah, oh yeah! So confused. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions. When you have a perpetual what the WTF? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> WTF. Oh, what Enough. I ain't going to farther than this. I will have it jacked. Yeah. <laughs> you don't quit. You're you're complete at this yes. point. You at just need point, we I just need to let it dry now. Not just base. need to let it dry. Not base. That's what I have to. And I think it would be really cool if we got um, whenever everyone feels like they're finished, or at least to a stopping point. I mean, you guys. I mean. Do they have to leave by a certain time? No. Okay. So you guys can chill here as long as you need to to feel like you're finished. But whenever we all kind of get to a stopping point, I think it would be really cool to take a photo of um, what they look like at this stage. And then tomorrow take a picture of what they look like whenever they're painted. Yeah, so you add color and yes. different shadows. It looks, awesome. it looks so cool to see kind of the progression of it. And see how it how it looked different, how it how it changed, because it really kind of shows a lot of you know the vision that that you guys have as artists in what you saw before everyone else saw it. So we're we gonna do these like I well I'll just wait for everybody to paint because I got questions on that. You got <laughs> you got questions already. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm open to questions now if you think you as need... As far as painting goes, do you start from dark to light or do you have a nice dark? I usually start, so not not so much with dark to light with this kind of stuff. I start with color first and then add in the shadows. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then uh, the highlights I'll do last because I use a lot of metallics. So I'll pick, I put the metallics on last as the accents. So with my carbon. And I'll bring in my paint for you guys, and whenever I get a look at all you guys' stuff here in a second, I'm going to try and get an idea and make sure that I have enough colors, and if I don't, then I can run to Hobby Lobby real quick and get the colors that we need. But I, I've got pretty much all the bases covered. Yeah. I met Cody the other day. They had all of their um, paint, um, what is that, crap, what was the name of them? It was their paint. Prism <laughs> color. It wasn't the Prism colors, but the other ones. Fine art. Fine, 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 uh, fine touch. Fine touch. Fine touch yeah. yeah, fine touch and I master's touch. I use a lot. I use the Master, tubes. Yeah. <sighs> master's touch and, and fine touch was all 50%. Yeah, off. I hit up those sales all the time. I got it off of Hobby Lobby when they were getting rid of some of their fine touch and they yeah. were redoing it. And I got those big jars of paint for a dollar and a half a piece. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was sitting there the other day, the week before last, I guess, it was mm -hmm. before the Black Friday. Yeah. And I got uh, some red brushes for my soft legs. I'm sure okay. too. If we want, if we want something specific, we probably got one of us is you know somebody's probably got it at home. They yeah, got something they want to bring in. Yeah, which you guys are welcome to do as well. I mean, that's that's a cool. That's another cool thing about doing this is the um, this medium. You can put almost anything on top of it, like any kind of color. Now, I'll tell you this: if you use watercolors on it or dilute the um, dilute acrylics with water and put it on top of the dried spackle, it creates like a stain. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, you can you can do that too, but it'll come off a bit drier than if you just lay acrylic straight on there. What about, have you tried using um, acrylic inks? No, I haven't tried using it. I've been really interested in those, but I haven't tried using any of them yet. But they, they've really interested that I want to use, but I haven't. Well, I've tried. I haven't. I haven't. I'm using the small it. flower beater. I'm using the small palette and then just, here, let me find a space on here that I can show you. I'm just kind of doing like that. To load it up at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, at the end. And if it gets loaded up, you know, if you get like little pieces that scrape off as, you know, in the process that, you know, you don't want later, you can just scrape it right off or use water to smudge it away. And you're doing it kind of like a cake decorator. Yes, yes, a lot like a cake decorator. And you know, I've used piping with this before too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's very similar to cake frosting. And mm -hmm. I use my hands to do the base like an animal. Oh, I'd have to have a cake decorator. <laughs> but you can totally just use the knife. So. <laughs> I'm Note very... to self: Do not let Sadie do your cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know what? I'm different with food. I can't stand food being on me. No. Really? But paint is fine. Paint is fine. But food, no. You know, my, my one of my grandchildren, um, they have a problem with texture. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't care. He doesn't like the, the food, certain textures of food. But yet we'll finger paint. Well, I'll get him into the painting, and he'll touch it, and he'll get messy, and he won't get paranoid by, by it. But paint's okay. I, I don't know. I wonder what it is about the paint that makes it so. Much it's cheaper. magic. Yeah, oh yeah, it's magic. It's magic. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's what it is. You've got magic. Paint is magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm going to come behind you with the, the camera so don't freak out too bad. Okay, <laughs> Is that a warning for him? Huh? Is that a warning for him? No, like, <laughs> that way. It's heavy. Don't be heavy. Don't be heavy, and that's fine. That's fine. Look how cute. <laughs> Honey, yours looks amazing. I couldn't do this. Oh, yes, she could. Oh, I'm not. I'm not paint inclined. It does not make a difference. Oh, yours looks creepy. That's cool. Thanks. It does. I like the the paint textures. The textures. You're creepy. Okay. So that way it just oh. has a seam where it's kind of smudged at the ends because that'll kind of help secure it. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm new at this, so I'm still trying to find new ways, like different ways to like explain the this terminology. Things. Yeah, like the, our terminology. Yeah, so like to me, it's just like my brain is just like I'll just do it, but explaining it is different. I have a question. What is like the yellow? Um, okay, best so idea? for that yellow, for this, it's actually spackle mixed with paint. I tinted it with a little bit of paint so that teaching them, they would be able to see what they were doing. I usually work from just a white base, but this okay. kind of helps. It's like a tool. It doesn't have a functional reason. Like you can. It's and also just to kind of 
I think so. I think that it helps it stick because okay. it makes the uh, base of the canvas more porous. Yeah. So that right. it's two exactly. materials yeah. being stuck onto each other, mm -hmm. onto a base that covers the entire thing, which makes it more stable. And even then, like, I mean, I do acrylic painting, and I was telling them, I don't really like the texture of the canvas very much. I don't know why. I just, for some, for some reason, whenever I paint on it, it doesn't feel finished. So even the paintings that I do that are flat, I cover it in a thin layer of the spackle and then paint on top of it. And I think it gives it a more finished feel and makes it seem like I used more paint than I actually did. What if you like paint layers. it first, like paint the, the background like first and then do the spackling like on top of it? Can I've you done do that, that or too. will the spackling like come off? I, I've done that before too. As long as it's like in one whole layer no, then gonna, i mean again i've done it before and it, it works it works that way too an hour and 23 minutes exactly what that you've been sitting oh yeah this was <laughs> <laughs> they need to try mixing acrylic paint and oil paint have i tried uh -huh. i haven't i haven't tried it i'm too scared because oils are so expensive <laughs> that's the oils are so expensive that i'm just so I want to take the chance. Why I ask because I've got um, some. Bags. Or do you mean like mixing them together or just no, a no. mixed media? It's like mixed media. Are we How are artists? artists? Probably accidentally. There's four of them. Um, there <laughs> is. Uh, there's that. Uh, so we're missing I four of them. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 well, I'm not these two. They're textured. They were missing the same Oh, and they're oils. Oils. oh cool. And yeah. they use Well, I use oils too. See, and. I like um, these because I'll do my painting. And like I, if I'm doing, I've got mermaids. I did. And I'm really yeah, five female artists. I don't have to scale it. Maria, you Maria. use that paint. Just use the paint to make it pop out. Forms yeah. the scales. Yeah. That's me. You just got to be cool. careful when you're sealing it because you'll you have to seal it different. How do you like dry the paint on oil paints? Huh? How do you dry the paint? Do they like, dry? Do they ever dry? Yeah. Like, because okay. I have. Here's like, the thing. Yeah. So, with acrylics, they are part water. So, if you'll notice, whenever you paint with acrylics and they dry, if parts of it are drying faster than others, mm -hmm. the parts that are dry are lighter. That is the water evaporating from it. That that's what makes it dry. And then with watercolors, it's the same way. That it dries by evaporation. Well, oils don't evaporate the same way. So since there's not water in oil paints, they evaporate differently. That's why it takes so long. But you'll notice that your paint doesn't shrink and the colors dry exactly how they come out of the tube. Mm -hmm. So like with an acrylic, acrylics are so weird. Like if you put like a fixative on it or if you, or if you use any kind of lacquer on it after it dries, it'll change the color of it sometimes depending on what brand of paint you mm -hmm. use. But oils won't do that. They'll be the same color no matter what. Unless you manipulate it. <laughs> oh, so like the, so <laughs> like the acrylics will change. Like they'll get okay. lighter or darker or whatever when they dry. Yeah, because of the evaporation. <laughs> yeah, but oils, they stay the same. That's why they're so expensive. And that's why they take so long to dry. Because what takes longer to dry, oil or water? Like oil, like, do you have to spray the oil with something to you make can, it dry? You can uh, use uh, fixatives that um, spray that are supposed to make it dry faster. I tried doing that once and it did not work. Like it still took forever. But if you let it, what you're supposed to do, or what most people do, is they let it dry all the way and then they paint a uh, fixative or um, a varnish on top of it. That's what I do. So that's that's the most common way of, of using oils, which again, that's why oils are so much more expensive uh, as paintings is because there's so much time in them and you have to you know keep in mind your environment and stuff. That's why I don't do oils a lot of times because you have to let it set flat and dry so long. And I don't have, I don't always have a way to let it set flat. And oils tend, I don't, I don't care for oils as much because they tend to smell. Yes, they smell very, I like the way they smell. But, <laughs> so I like the way they smell, but I guess it's almost not they're not good for you. Well, what's bad for you is the uh, varnishes and stuff that you mix it with and the oils that you mix it with to dilute it or to manipulate the color of it. That's strong. It's strong and it's 
stings your nose. Is that a paint thinner or something? Turpentine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's strong. That's just paint thinner. I got a question for you, Sadie. Me? Does, uh, does the mud shrink? As it dries. Yes. Oh, good question. Shrink it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, we're live. Yes. <laughs> you dirty girl. Yeah. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my adding you know a varnish to it or something that'll help it stick that's why you know again acrylic paint can actually work really well for that too sometimes cracking yeah. is cool mm -hmm. <laughs> the, un the unexpected is usually yeah. <laughs> this would be cool for like uh, architectural stuff like very nice and whatnot yeah like, you remember like old school um, Plaster. Yeah. Nice. Well, with the mash chair around and stuff. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. It looks great. I can't tell if it's a balance. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Keep thinking I need yeah. to add something. Again, else. so. I feel like I need to build the mountains up more. Are those mountains? You know, you have one, you have the one area, and again, that draws your eye this way. Right. Now, I'll say this your flowers are very evenly dispersed. If you bunched some more, even just bunched some petals up around um, a certain area. So, like, if you bunch some up around here, you could do like, something going down that way. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I'll sit there and I'll be looking at it. It's very good. It comes out well. Right. Well, did mountains? I mean, she can see it. That looks great. It just kind of <laughs> like birds. Yeah, like how she's able to make it work. Oh, I can yeah. see the birds. It's so cute. Yeah, that's I didn't that's... want to do flowers. <laughs> that's okay. Aww. That's okay. Those are good, too. <laughs> what do you have against yeah. flowers? I don't know. I just yeah, don't want to do flowers. <laughs> Oh, I, I love it. When's the last time we got you flowers? Flowers? It almost kind of has a rose effect. I don't like flowers. I like cheeseburgers. Yeah, okay. she goes. <laughs> I used to buy her flowers all the time. And she I, said, would no, you stop doing I that? Just buy me cheeseburgers. I I, well, okay, so anytime I get roses or anything, really if I cool touch them, they turn uh, black. Oh, my goodness. They do. Can, uh, it doesn't them. matter. It's like I'm an hour wild. of me I like to use metallics to like really accent well, I don't that, toxic. you know, pop out. Because <laughs> I think I it don't really know. Really I don't like it. It really catches your eye. I don't know. That's why I don't know. 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 Colors and then uh, add in the shadows and then the highlights last. 
Like, yeah, can I get an email mean, address for you? People do it. Uh, Jenkins, not Jenkins. Yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. I haven't Gmail. painted that one. Spell Jenkins just to paint. J E N K I N. It's changed again. You don't want to do it. At Gmail? Spoils are so hard to keep no, separate. Sure. <laughs> do it no, but that's yeah. so hard. Well, they're so hard. So I'm going to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send <laughs> Chuck your stuff that he will call you, and uh, you guys can so, uh, yeah. Yeah. coordinate through there. I like really stark shadows. Oh, uh, like they're good. Really uh, if you need vibrant help, shadow you're supposed to kind of just come on so in here, and I will help you so contrast. that you can. Um, I just want to make sure that he talks yeah. about his pricing better value so than I do because he's yeah. the one that you go I straight to him. Give the so I'll have him give you a call, yeah. actually and his name will be Chuck because I wanted it to be yeah. abstract. So he, yeah. he'll probably leave you a voicemail okay. with that. Yeah. And uh, that way you guys can discuss your pricing point a little better and exactly what you're wanting with the dog. And then after that, you can come in, and I can help you send your email, the picture, the the yeah. cell phone picture, and uh, you'll come back here to pick it up. Okay. 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 It's real easy. <laughs> well, my problem is my eyesight. Well, if we have to, we can have. I can ship it to you as well. All right. So right. I've got your information, and I will. We'll both probably be contacting you within the next couple. Okay. Let me get to y'all over here. Oh, you're so sorry. Right. Thank you so much for coming back in. Y'all did good, right? Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm not a toilet paper. That's okay. <laughs> Jocelyn doesn't like oh, it. What do you think I should do? Do you think I should yeah. save it or should I like just If you want it to have a pilot up or else it'll uh, crack really easily. <laughs> okay. So like you'll either have to pile it up like I did here or you could just scrape it off and make it a finished edge. Which might be better if you're wanting to transport it a lot, but if you're just wanting it for your use to just mm -hmm. put it on the wall, then I mean, you can go for it and just pile it up there on the edges. This is my first first one. Do you need more? Uh, I think it looks great though. Yeah, I like yeah. it. I think it's so great. Do you want more spackle? Yes. Here, here's a hot tub. That's all you. I know, right? <laughs> I'm about to point by going any farther. I am Which, if you let it dry in your fingers, it kind of chips off and comes off really easy. I'm not paint inclined, so. <laughs> it's, uh, that's something I learned back in the wood when I first started wood cutting. You can't add wood. Right. And you will get <laughs> hypnotized and you will go too far. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. stop and sit back and look. And then work a little bit more and then stop and sit back and look. Because I have dug the whole side of the face all the way down to the bottom. Oh, and the farther I went, the worse it looked. I was like, duh. <laughs> yeah. You know? Can't undo that. Nope. Unfortunately, with the kind of painting that I normally do, you can't do that. Yeah. You got your, you pretty much, if, if you don't like it, you start over. <laughs> or you just paint something over it or use it as a background or something. Yeah. But, well, I'm going to get back into doing the saw blades. Have you guys heard of Rachel Hedrick? Mm -hmm. The one does the saw blades and stuff. I've seen those, but I haven't heard like, who did like it. Like carving on saw blades? Or no, she's, it, she's It's acrylic paints, isn't it? Yeah, okay. she does saw acrylic blades. on saw blades. I've seen she a couple them, of them. She does all them uh, popcorn settings. So oh, okay. Mine's already okay. starting to hurt. Yeah. Oh. We went to the Asheville oh, Arts District. Water. And they had some bigger that were like yeah. big on the huge right. saw blades that had like mountain scenes and stuff yeah. on them. So back in the day when I was married my first one. I mean like the saw blade paint thing is really cool, but the yeah. Asheville Arts District. You sound like my husband. Oh, really? It's really hot. He's <laughs> like that. He's like this. You know, when I was down with my first wife. Yeah. I didn't well, ask him when we got that. before we got married. Yeah. I didn't ask him how many he had. <laughs> many he had. Uh, and no, his no, cousin he was his uh, was our was his best just, man you walk at our wedding. And like he kept my husband kept yeah, messing up the bunch of shops, the vows. And he said, "You should know this by now." Nobody watching. That's kind of an odd thing to say. And then I thought then I thought that was number five. Well, I was talking about how it was a public was, I'm, I'm his last one. He doesn't get another one. Oh, yeah. The park one is Yeah. It was, 
Asheville's amazing. I love the city, but the arts, the, the what they call the arts district, is that just way. What was that? Right, what was it called in that, the <laughs> middle of the town? Friendly. You know what? That big place in Sometimes the you got to keep doing it right. Uh, yeah. Oh, the Galleria? Sometimes yeah, the Galleria. Yeah, the Galleria, that was awesome. Yeah. 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 It's like an old yeah. building that they turned into a really cool mall. It's got a lot of history you know So it's amazing. But when Asheville had the best, though, what do you mean it's not private, Karen? Well, it's like, so it's this warehouse, but on the left side of it, you've got stairs. It's like an emergency exit to go through. But you feel like you're invading yeah, not, the I space I, I, I'm done. because I, I, they have all these doors that are typically shut, death, and then they have like thousand dollar paintings hanging on the walls in the hallways, and there's nobody watching them. So it just makes you feel kind of uncomfortable Where? to be there as a consumer. Asheville Arts District, hmm. like it's a building. Never been there. Yeah, it, it's it, it just makes you feel uncomfortable as a consumer and as like it's I would find the an artist. On the right side, the whole right side of the warehouse is all I'm experimenting a little bit with a lot of people ask me to do inner and I'm just I'm not into animals. See, we're gonna be more public. I did that cat right there. I'm gonna be comfortable viewing the art and I don't know. I like it. Oh, the pumpkin crab. Yeah. It's got glow in the eye. Right. Say, so I washed my hands. It's not a big deal. 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 Look at me. I'm putting on my finger and using my finger as a palette. A palette? Yeah, that's pretty smart. Hey, that shifts the floor. Makes me happy. Oh, that'd be so weird. If we have an inclination that somebody is. What you doing, Scott? Trying to make off with something. Wait, no, it's a cake. Yeah, but the $1,000 paint is huge. Oh, well, I mean, it'll have to dry overnight. Just wait on the key. That's all I'm doing. Just looking at it. Right. 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 it up. So. I think he's talking about a baby section. <laughs> I mean, granted, they have to get some more green for you guys. It's concrete top. You got you put lime in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I don't know that. No, I don't. Because with all this together, we should be able to get like a discount to travel this season. Oh, yeah. Target. That would be amazing. Well. Mexico has some really nice nice. art. I, yeah, I work in uh, what they call soft yeah. lines, so I work with clothes and That's, stuff. Yeah. Ask Tech. Say, do you want to <laughs> <laughs> recycle this? So that would be fun. Yeah, we can. We can get like uh, a bunch of like, we can scrape and scoop yeah. from here and there. I don't like wasted. wasted. That no, me awesome. neither. That would be fantastic. See, I scrape as I go. I scrape it on the edge yeah. there and then yeah. I'll reuse it. I use um, my paint. I always put something in the bottom of Where my paint. I talked to you about talking about the last three words. Because of my leaves. Mm-hmm. I don't well, I use, I use the skin. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I should also, really consider doing that. I just have so a $500 job yesterday. Wow. So, like, awesome. They're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Well, I use the. Yeah, yeah that's a good job. Of course. So, have you been getting to work with them? or? Casual. Let me borrow that one for a minute. I'm just getting like small jobs here and there. Yeah. Cumulative, but Cause I can say I don't know, I I to have something And you know, sometimes like as you work, you make a little bits that end up no being like you get like chunky yeah. or dry. Like but I yeah. take advantage yeah. of that, you know, and I'll I'll try mix to it up and use that as some of the tinting, you know, the tinting composite or whatever. Like jobs that it's just more texture. That's why I like doing the natural textures and stuff because nine designs or something. Okay. They're really forgiving. Again, yeah. it's, trees are wacky. They just go yeah. every which I way. I love trees so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I don't know. You you have got so do. much personality. Okay. I know you probably like British. I, I don't know. Have no, you oh, you're talking about British. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. So they, they might be spirals and they reach out to hey, I'm aggressive and not being freelance. I just want to get a job. I'm trying to have a contract with them. It's crazy because it feels like it doesn't take you very long to do that stuff. But then it's like I look up and it's dark outside. Do you draw? Do you draw so, that first, or do you just go with it and just paint? Some of them I, I have a plan do. for, and some of them not. Like the faces, I always have a plan right. for. Um, all the ones on this wall, mm-hmm. except for one, but... yeah, <laughs> except for um, this one down here. Well, how are you with kids? 
or oh, just I think like I mean, as I go because I want to see I want to have a graphic design well, class there for <laughs> middle schoolers. And you know, they, the, the, be I think they turn that. out that's a study job better yeah. that way. Like I, I, I really I try. I'll draw mine out on paper, yeah, we can see so, so I have a plan. Text stuff wise, and then I go to there. I got, you know, I don't know if I'm getting ready to do a counselor. So far, like I've never done myself on that level. Mm -hmm. yeah, what? Right. Well, you can get your skull. Oh, okay. You know, right? I've never done that right. before. Yeah. And I mean, the lady say, asked to do that. Classes for the kids. Sure, why not? Yeah. They're not so ladies. I'm waiting for the yeah. 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 you know? we, we bleached it. So I'm waiting for it to dry so it will, you know, take my paint down. You're going to paint on a cow skull? Oh, wow. It's a skull. Yeah. 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 We, we bleached yeah. it and now yeah. and we mm -hmm. had it. It's, 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 it's not an actual skull. No, it's an actual skull. Oh, it's an actual skull. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah. It's an actual yeah. bull skull. I like that. So she's going to bring Where did you get it? It's actually the lady who wants it done. She's bringing it to me. She does... Horseback riding. She does in competitions and she teaches horseback riding. And her uh, fiance teaches bull riding. Oh wow! And they have a um, a place too that they you know have a kennel and stuff like that. So she uh, she asked me if I could. How do are we doing? Is there anything We're doing great, but I think my mom broke into my apartment. I've already draw, I've already um, <laughs> like on purpose. <laughs> She's watching. Well, she just sent a picture of a bunch of armored vehicles from the apartment complex. Yeah, the bottom of the house. Yeah, it's like on that side of town. And then the top of the house. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, ye
And you can go put them back in my sink and just throw them in there and I can wash them later. So the world can wash my hands. Why did I try and do There's no there is soap back there. There actually I do have soap. It's back there in the back to the left. Don't worry about any of the dishes that are in there. Jocelyn gets to wash those. All this stuff that's put in there, she doesn't. Well will you look at this? <laughs> Y'all know anything about like cleaning the lint out of your dryer, like shop bag? Yeah, okay. That's what I do for a living. Okay. Oh really? <laughs> Does it, so is that yeah, really important to have that done? No, you're or, like, fine. I just can it start a fire? Like, so yeah, you don't want to do start a fire. Oh my no, but it's it's not pointed. You're good. The video's over there. Oh okay. Well, uh, ten months. Two months. Two months. Yeah. Okay. Depends on how much you use. Yeah, yeah. really. So we like our, all of ours are We're still live. Oh. Well, yeah, it's on Penny. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if it was live or if it was like recording. Eight oh. washrooms and all yeah, of them no. have about it was five washrooms. Washrooms. Yeah, which is, but see, nobody's faces were really shown. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's mainly, it's mainly Zoe's face and everybody has hands and paintings. So there's like flashes of when I'm around, but nobody was really I don't even think I said anyone's name. It's just me and there's 250 apartments. Well, I had a helper for yeah. four hours a day. Are they gas or electric? No, I'm so excited. I think these are going to be awesome. I do mine about every two months. And it's actually the life of your freaking dryer. Really? Uh, yeah, because if anything come coals get hot and burn out. Like saves electricity too, yeah. probably, right? It saves a little bit of money. That oh, way. yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're keeping all your vents and hose and stuff. For yeah. Everything. Spin around, take the daggum hose off of it, stick a shot back up in there, and suck it out real good. Put it back in there for 15 minutes of the day. I love your hair, boy. I've been meaning to tell you that. Is it here? 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 Is